Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's webinar, Studying Wines with WSCT. My name is Christine Kamime. I am the head of APP Development in the Americas region, and I'm joined today by my colleague Jason Will Willis, uh, business development, or sorry, APP Development Manager, also based in the Americas region. Um, today, you're joining us at WSCT. For those of you who are less familiar with WSCT, the Wine and Spirit Education Trust is the world's leading provider of qualifications and courses in wines, spirits, sake, and now beer. Uh, WSCT has over 50 years of experience in designing and delivering education to help both wine professionals and consumer enthusiasts learn more about wine, spirits, and sake. You can take WSCT qualifications in over 70 countries through a network of more than 800 course providers. If you're interested in learning more about embarking on a WSCT journey, please visit wsctglobal.com to find your nearest course provider. Now, just a few housekeeping notes as well. Um, this webinar is being recorded uh, and it will be available to watch via our WSCT Global Events Hub on YouTube. Um, and please, as we're going through the presentation today, uh, put any questions that you have in the Q&A box. Um, we have a, a chat box where you can tell everyone where you're joining us from, um, but also a Q&A box, and we'll address those questions at the end of the webinar. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jason to start beginning to tell you all about our wonderful wines qualifications. All right. Thank you, Christine, and welcome, everybody, uh, to this webinar. Um, so our wine qualifications, our suite of wine qualifications, start from level one and they go up to level four, which is otherwise known as the diploma uh, in wines. Um, the subject stream is wine only. Um, you may have seen in the past that there were people who have a wines and spirits. Um, that was phased out over the past decade or so, a little bit less than a decade. Uh, and so there is a, just a pure wine stream. If you are interested in the spirits, that is a different stream. And you can find out more about that through wctglobal.com. But we're here today to talk about wines and, and wines only. And in each level, they will, there will be theory and there will be tastings. And so what I'm going to introduce first is just how the theory levels up uh, across levels one to diploma. All right, so if Christine, if we got the, the, the first one there, perfect, thank you. Um, so theory, um, we will see how it changes across the level. So at level one, um, it is about the facts. Uh, we will answer the question, what? So there's factual wine knowledge, um, basic facts. So for example, what is wine? What is fermentation? Uh, what is uh, sparkling wine? What is Chardonnay? And so you might think that, um, from level one to level two, it's just going to be more facts and level three will be even more facts, level four will be even more facts. And then when we finish the diploma, we have an encyclopedic knowledge of wine. Well, not, not exactly. I mean, yes, we do learn more as we go up the levels, but there are additional skills being developed as well. So at level two, we do have that broader wine knowledge, um, but we also develop an understanding uh, of how those different facts kind of relate to each other. Um, so we can answer the question, how? So if I do this to a wine, how does that impact the, the flavor and style of that wine? If I grow Chardonnay in a cool climate, how does that impact the flavors of that? So um, this is how what we would understand uh, at level two. At level three, we do gain even more uh, knowledge. So we call it, say, a, a comprehensive wine knowledge. Um, but in addition to that, we are also understanding more, again, about how those elements, those concepts interact and how they relate to each other. But we also develop the ability to explain and apply knowledge and so be able to answer the question why. So we can say, OK, if I do this to a wine and it was, this is the result, that's a how. But why would I do that? Why were those choices being made? And this is that application of knowledge uh, that we would see at level three to be able to explain. And at the highest level, uh, which is at the diploma level, um, there is added depth um, to that knowledge. Again, we are, we're gonna know more facts. We're gonna understand the relationship between them. We're gonna explain why things happen the way they do and why choices are made. But we have an added kind of trade and business angle considerations that we would have at this level. So there's an additional um, skill of analysis and evaluation 
uh, this is being made at this level. So um, not only why are those choices made, but the resulting wine, what am I going to do about it? What am I doing with this wine? Um, and how does this fit into the market? So those type of questions uh, we can start to answer at level four. All right, so that is how we see the, the, the theory leveling up across the levels, and I'll pass it to Christine to talk about the tasting across the levels. So as Jason said, you know, we're building on skills as we move from level one to level four in theory. We're doing the same thing when we look at tasting. So at level one, remember the skill that we're looking at in theory is knowing. So when we're tasting, we're starting to understand what does this wine taste like? Um, so we're going to start, you know, tasting what's in the glass and linking what we're finding in the glass to words and sensations. Um, and we'll do some demonstrations of what this looks like throughout the webinar today. Now, tasting is not assessed at level one, but you are going to taste a, a few wines in your level one class and start to become familiar with how to describe those wines and put them into words. Now at level two, remember the skill is understanding. So at level two, as we're tasting, we're trying to understand the influence of natural and human factors on aromas and taste. So, you know, what's happening out in the vineyard, what's happening in the winery, and how does that affect what we're finding in the glass? So the question we might be asking at level two is what makes this wine unique? What makes one wine different from another wine and how did we get there? Um, so at level two, that's kind of what the, the outcome is that we're looking for. Now, again, wines are not assessed in an exam setting at level two. Um, that doesn't begin until level three. But at level two, you're tasting a really vast array of wines and you're setting up that skill set to be able to do a bit more evaluation um, and taste wines in exam conditions at level three. So speaking of level three. Um, the skill that we're learning at level three is how to explain. So here at level three, we're adding detail to effectively understand arguments for quality, quality and aging potential. So as we're tasting wine throughout a level three course, we're constantly asking, how good is this wine? Now, how good is this wine doesn't mean do I like it or not. We're using evaluative criteria to make an assessment of the quality of the wine. Uh, comparatively to every other wine in the world. Um, and we'll again, we'll talk about how this works as we work through the session today. The other question we begin asking at level three is, will this wine get better in the bottle? So, you know, many people think, you know, every wine should sit in my cellar and age for decades and decades, and then it will be delicious. Not so much. Uh, I think as most wine people know, there are some wines that can do that. Um, but many wines should not be laid down for a long time. Maybe they'll stay the same in the bottle, but they're not going to get better or more interesting. So this is a question we really dive into and explore at level three while we're tasting. And you look at specific criteria to make that decision. Now at level four, the skill we're working with is analyzing. So just as we're working on analyzing in theory, we're also analyzing the wines during the tasting. So during a level four tasting, you're building a very detailed picture of the breadth of wines available to be able to identify them accurately and argue for quality. So here we're asking, you know, not just how good is this wine, but why is this wine good? So at level four, you're going to have to write an actual argument for why this wine is the quality level that you decide it to be. We're still looking at its ability to age, but we're not just saying yes or no, it will age. We're talking about how will it age? Um, so how do we expect it to change in the bottle if we think that it, it can stand up to that type of aging? And why does it, you know, why does it have this ability? Um, we're also looking at what is it? So when you're tasting wines in an examination conditions at level four, um, you're tasting wines blind. The wine will be blind as well at level three. Um, and by blind, you, it means you have no idea what the wine is in your glass. So as you're tasting it and writing tasting notes for the wine, you're making intelligent guesses on you know, what it is um, and you know, where it falls into in the larger spectrum of the wine world. And again, we'll look at this throughout the session today. 
Now, as we're tasting, keep in mind that we taste at WSET you know, because it's fun, yes, but we're always tasting to build our tasting skills and relate it back to theory. So as we're tasting, we might have a wine in front of us and say, oh, okay, this wine has a ruby red color. It has ripe fruit aromas. Maybe it has some spicy flavors, high acidity, a long finish. As we're tasting that, we're looking in the glass and saying, why do these conditions exist in the glass? What happened in the vineyard or in the winery that made this possible? And that's linking our knowledge and our theory to what's in the glass. So as Jason and I talk through levels one through four today, we're going to show you exactly what this means in terms of linking tasting to theory. Now, where is the color coming from? Is it come, coming from the grape variety? Is it coming from winemaking techniques? Uh, and this will differ at level one, two, three, and four as you build up those different skills that we just discussed previously. So as we're tasting, we're always linking back to theory to build an understanding of what's in the glass. So with that in mind, we're gonna jump right into level one. So level one award in wines is our entry level qualification uh, for wines. The target audience is beginners. Um, so there is no prerequisite knowledge required. Um, the format is six hours. Um, and this includes a one hour exam and there's no prior preparation required. So there's no need to study in advance. Um, you can show up to your class, um, have a lot of fun, learn something in the process. So what will you learn at level one? So at level one, you're going to learn grape growing about grape growing and winemaking. Um, you're going to know, remember that we're looking at knowledge is the main factor we're, we're trying to understand here. So know the basic stages of grape growing and winemaking. What else are you going to learn? The principal grape varieties and wine styles. So you're going to know the types, characteristics, and styles of wines made from the principal grape varieties and other examples of wine. Now, when we say a principal grape variety, maybe asking, you know, what does what is a principal grape variety? Those are some varieties such as uh, Chardonnay or Cabernet or Merlot, um, different grapes that are, are available across the world um, and are kind of the backbone of the wine industry. So as we start talking about all of the four levels today, we're specifically going, Jason and I, going to look at Chardonnay and how it um how it is covered at each of the different levels. At level one, we're also going to look at storage, service, and food pairing. Um, so at level one, there's a, a lot of fun food pairing activities. Um, you'll know the basic principles and practices involved in the storage and service of wine. There's quite a bit of tasting wine with food, um, and this makes for a very fun level one class. And as we mentioned before, tasting wine is not assessed, but you will begin using our systematic approach to tasting. And we'll look at that in one moment. So again, if we're looking at Chardonnay through the lens of level one, this is an actual slide from a level one class. And this is how we'd approach Chardonnay here. We begin looking at the structural components of Chardonnay, as well as some of the traditional flavors that you'll find in Chardonnay. Um, so here we might look at the potential acidity levels of Chardonnay. It might be high, it might be medium, um, and also some of the flavors. So apples, lemon, pineapple, peach, and vanilla. Um, we'd also start looking at where Chardonnay is typically grown. Um, we'd look at different styles such as Chablis and White Burgundy, um, which are kind of named styles of Chardonnay as well as Australia and California, places where Chardonnay is grown quite widely, um, and then also Champagne. So some of you may know that Chardonnay is one of the main grapes used in Champagne. So a really intro introductory look at Chardonnay, one of these uh, main grape styles that we're looking at, um, that will then build upon at level two and level three. So this is basically all of the theory that we're covering for Chardonnay at level one. Now, when we're tasting Chardonnay at level one, we're going to begin using our 
systematic approach to tasting. Um, so our systematic approach to tasting is the way we look at all wines at WSCT. Um, and we have this kind of uh, uh, grid to follow. Um, and we, we break it down at level one into appearance, nose, and palate. Um, so when we're looking at a wine at level one, and I have a Chardonnay in front of me here, um, apologize for the blurring that Zoom is doing. Um, but I have a 2022 Sonoma Coast Chardonnay. So if I was going to look at this in the context of level one, I'd say, all right, this is a white wine. That is the appearance, the characteristics. I might begin finding some, you know, fruit in it. So then I can maybe relate the fruit to some specific types of fruit, perhaps lemon or peach or apple. And if I was teaching a level one class, I'd begin to ask students, you know, where is this fruit coming from? Why are we smelling the lemon, peach, and apple? And the answer is it's coming from the actual Chardonnay grape itself. Um, I might smell a little oak as well. And then I can start thinking about, you know, where is that oak coming from? It's, or sorry, smelling some vanilla or toast. Where is that coming from? And that would be from oak. On the palate, Here I can also start relating to the flavors I find here. Again, some apple and lemon that's coming from the Chardonnay grape um, and also some vanilla coming from oak, um, but also starting to talk about the structure of this wine, getting a lot of acidity um, in this wine. So I might wanna start talking about that as well. So a pretty quick tasting at level one, but we are starting to make some links to theory. Um, so talking about how the grape Chardonnay shows up in different flavors in the glass. And with that, I will hand it over to Jason for level two. All right, thanks, Christine. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll be taking you through level two and level three. Um, first, level two, right. So level two is the intermediate level, we will say. Um, that is the target audience. Uh, the format of this course is about 16 hours in the classroom. Um, there's a one hour multiple choice exam. Um, and there's 11 hours of self-study expected. So total time all in is about 28 hours for this course. Um, there is no prerequisite here. So I wanna be very clear that you do not need to take a level one course before you take a level two course. And I'll explain that a little bit more that on the next slide. Um, but just before we go on, um, you'll see in the picture there, it's actually a great picture because you can see the textbook and the workbook uh, which come with the level two course, as well as a printed SAT, like systematic approach to tasting card that will be pr provided by your provider. Um, and sometimes that would be in advance. Um, and so you would be able to do a little bit of studying in advance, although it's not really expected at this level. Right. So what are we going to cover at level two? Now, as I mentioned, it, level one is not a prerequisite. So everything that would be in level one is actually covered in level two, but expanded upon. Um, so there are the environmental influences in grape growing. So um, what are the, some of the natural considerations in the vineyard? What are, what are the human influences in the vineyard? Um, what uh, is being done by human influence in the winery? So winemaking as well as maturation and the choices there. Um, the eight principal grape varieties that we would see at level one uh, that Christine mentioned of which Chardonnay is certainly one of them, but there's also regionally important grape varieties uh, and there's about 22 of those um, in level two uh, that would be considered as well. And actually the structure of the information at level two is um, all grape varieties. So once you've gone past the, the, the foundation about uh, grape growing and winemaking, it's all by grape. Um, we also cover sparkling and fortified wines um, as well as storage service and food pairing. So um, one thing about level one is that there is a big focus on the food and wine pairing. And as Christine mentioned, a lot of fun activities. Level two, we cover the same principles, but without as many fun activities, unfortunately. So a bit more serious at level two. Actually, I'm kidding. It's not not, not, not too serious. So um, what else did I want to mention? That it does have uh, 70 geographical indications are covered at level two. And also the tasting uh, here is not assessed either. Although at level, we will see the SAT, at level two, there is a little bit more importance placed on the calibration with the educator with an eye to taking level three. Um, so you start to learn how to calibrate to be able to get kind of on the same page as the educator as you're tasting the wines. 
Right. So the theory at level two, uh, there's a little bit more. Um, we do cover the range of climates. Um, the Chardonnay is a very versatile grape. It can grow in cool, moderate and warm climates. Um, the acidity would be reflected in that. We actually understand how um, the growing uh, the, the, the growing environments like the climate can impact the acidity in the grape as we were talking about the relationships the, the, um, between them. Um, we know that uh, Chardonnay is typically made in a dry style. It can be light to full bodied, again, with a nod to the growing conditions. Warmer climates means more sugar accumulation, which means generally higher alcohol, which means generally fuller bodied. So those kind of connections we can make between that. Um, there are a range of winemaking techniques that can be used, um, which we'll look at in a little bit of detail here. Um, and also that Chardonnay can be used to make sparkling wines. And you saw that from the level one bit that, uh, that uh, Champagne is certainly one of them. Um, we also can see that uh, very good or outstanding examples have the ability to age. And Christine kind of mentioned that before, that not all wines have that ability, um, but we understand at level two that with sufficient acidity and concentration of flavors, a wine is well positioned to be able to age. And as it ages, it will develop some interesting characters like hazelnut and mushroom. Not everyone's cup of tea, but mushroom is, can be good as well. Um, right, let's continue then. Um, we will see that um, the characters that develop. Now, the SAT, uh, we'll, we'll, which we'll see shortly, um, has the the an expanded um, assessment in terms of appearance, nose and palate, but it also has a lexicon. It has some terms that, that would often be used to describe the characteristics. Um, and so we will see things like apple and pear and lemon um, being used in these terms, clustered in terms of green fruit and citrus fruits and stone fruit and so on. Um, so in a cooler climate, we see more of the green fruit and citrus fruit in a moderate climate, uh, peach and apricot, stone fruit, and in a warmer climate, we would see more tropical fruit. And the examples there are banana, melon, and pineapple. Some of the winemaking options, uh, adjustments, that's referring to if the acidity is too high, it can be neutralized. If the acidity is not high enough, it can be increased. Um, similar, if the, if the sugar levels in the grapes aren't sufficient, then sugar can be added uh, for more alcohol during the fermentation. Things like malolactic conversion, I'm not going to get into the details of all of these because it's a lot of information. I'm not teaching a level two course. Um, but suffice to say, there are some winemaking techniques that can uh, impact the flavors of the wines. Um, and we will see that a little bit more in the tasting. I'll, I'll, I'll make a nod to that. Thank you, Christine. And, and also, as we go through, we'll also see um, how, if, for example, in the Chablis region, you have Chablis, Premier Cru, and Grand Cru. But what, why do they have these terms and what impact does that have and where where the grapes are grown? How does that translate into potentially higher quality wines? And so we can understand that at level two as well. All right. So let's then have a look at the SAT. So we did see a level one. It was there was appearance. There was nose and palate. So we use a similar structure, in fact, for all the SATs at all the levels. Um, but we we have much uh, more detail here that we can break, get into at level two. So I also have the same wine as Christine, um, the so Sonoma Coast 2022 Chardonnay. Um, and so I'm gonna run through quickly um, the SAT. Now, typically in a level two tasting, before we actually start the tasting, we would have a look at the bottle, at the label. Um, interestingly enough, the subtext for the level two textbook is looking behind the label. So we will look at the label and glean some information from that and kind of put on our theory hats and say, oh, what do I expect this wine to taste like? So I know that Sonoma Coast is in California. That's a warm region, ah, but Sonoma is a relatively cool part of that. So I know that I may expect a range of characters to develop. Um, I know that um, it's 2022, it's a relatively young wine. So I may not expect some tertiary characters, which I'll explain shortly. Um, I know that winemaking, there may be some winemaking used here. There may be some oak maturation, which would impart certain flavors like vanilla or coconut or some spices uh, and so on. So I would generally run that by the students first to be able to get an expectation to say, oh, okay, I have a pretty good idea of what this, gonna, this wine is going to taste like even before I taste it. Um, and so we would get into that. Um, so I have my wine. I look at the appearance. Um, it's no longer just a white wine, but in this one, it is a medium lemon. All right, lemon is the descriptor we would use here. Medium is talking about the intensity. Um, 
there is there's there's not a huge amount of theory linkages there. I could say perhaps that it has spent some time in oak, which may account for that color change. In terms of the, the intensity on the nose, it is a medium intensity. The aroma characteristics, I break those down into primary, secondary, and tertiary. Um, what do we mean by that? Well, if you remember what Christine just showed in level one, we had fruit, oak, and others. That's kind of how this breaks down. Primary, aromas of the fruit and from the alcoholic fermentation. Secondary is winemaking post-fermentation. So oak usage, lees, malolactic. Tertiary is from maturity. So primary characteristics here, I smell um, some green fruits like apple. Um, I smell citrus fruits like lemon and lime. I smell um, stone fruit like peach and apricot, and then into some tropical fruit like uh, banana and melon. On secondary, I do smell a little bit of vanilla, like a little bit of spice like cloves um, and some a little bit of coconut. And I say a little because it's not that there's only a little bit there, it's just that it's very subtle. Um, the fruit is much stronger here. Tertiary, I don't find any tertiary characteristics. All right, so I may, again, I've linked to theory there and say, well, where are those secondary characteristics coming from? Where are those primary char characteristics coming from? And then again, we've got those linkages as we saw in the DNA um, slide there. All right, then on the palate, I'm gonna have a quick taste. Okay, sweetness, is there any residual, any remaining sugar in this wine from the production process? No, it is dry. Acidity, my mouth is watering quite a bit. I'm trying to not drool all over the place, um, is high acidity. Tannins are not relevant. Tan if for white wines, they would be for red, but this is a white wine, so I ignore that. The alcohol, we do have a range. We have some brackets. This alcohol is 13.5%, so it is a medium level of alcohol. Um, it is a medium bodied wine. That's gonna again, to get to the mouth feel and the kind of viscosity of the wine in the mouth. How intense are the flavors? I find that they're quite intense, so this is pronounced. Uh, flavor characteristics, I find uh, very similar to what I did on the nose in terms of apple and uh, lemon lime, um, peach and apricot and banana and melon and so on. But on the secondary, I find it's a little bit almost like a bread or bread dough character um, and um, a slight, very subtle buttery character there as well. And that, again, here's another theory linkage where I can say, okay, well, that kind of buttery character is likely from malolactic conversion. Um, the, the bread dough is more likely from, uh, from lees stirring and a little bit of time spent on the lees um, in the winemaking stage. Um, in the finish here is a medium finish, um, as in how long do the pleasurable parts last? Um, and so I find that it, it's, I'm not counting time or seconds. It's more about there's an interplay between flavors and acidity here that's going on. And the acidity seems to be winning out, but there does continue to persist. The nice flavors can persist for a little bit. So it's a medium finish. So now I've got kind of my observations of this wine and I want to make a kind of reasonable assessment. And typically it's the educator that will do this, um, but the students can certainly have an understanding of how that works. And so we look at it through the lens of the balance of the wine, the length, the intensity and the complexity. And here I would say simply that this wine is very good. Um, there's a great sense of balance between those flavor characteristics uh, as well as the um, rather the intense flavors uh, com compared to the acidity and the alcohol. So there's a balance going on there. The length was medium, um, which is not great. I would like to see that longer. It's got good intensity in terms of um, it goes from a kind of a medium to a pronounced intensity from the nose to the palate. And there's a range of characters uh, and depth within the different clusters. So this is a relatively complex wine. Um, so I say this wine is very good. Again, if that finish was a little bit longer, it would be outstanding, uh, but this is a very good wine. All right, and so this is how we would look at it in level two. And I'm conscious of time, so we're gonna plod right on to level three to see the difference. All right, so level three, um, this is more for the advanced students. So it's advanced level course. Um, I will say that level two is not explicitly required um, to, to start a level three, but you should have a level two equivalent knowledge um, before you go to level three. So if you go to a provider and you've not taken level two, then they may have, uh, they may want to just kind of quiz your knowledge before they let you in a level three course, because having no knowledge, it is a mountain to climb. It is very, very challenging. So you should have a, a, a at least level two knowledge before going into level three. 
Um, the course itself is 30 hours in the classroom. The exam is two and a half hours of which there is a tasting exam, uh, multiple choice exam and short written answers. So it's a much more involved exam. Um, and then in addition to that, there is an expectation of over 50 hours of self-study, 50, five zero. So it's actually 51 and a half hours of self-study. So what is covered at level three? Um, so there will be, again, theory and tasting, theory, the natural and human factors. That's going to be, again, what's um, done in the vineyard, what's done in the winery. Um, how is that then applied to still wines? Whereas at level two, we saw it applied across the grapes. In level three, we find it across the key wine regions around the world um, as applied to those grapes. Um, we'll also look at sparkling wines and fortified wines. And there is also still this information and advice in terms of storage, service, and food and wine pairing. Um, so level three, it is still in, in consideration there as well. Okay, in terms of the tasting, because it is assessed as part of the exam, um, there is a much stronger focus on calibration with the educator so that um, uh, everyone's on the same page. And so you have a, a good sense now, a lot of people are afraid of a tasting exam, thinking that must be the hardest part. Actually, it's not, because if you've gone through the course with your educator and you make a sensible tasting note, more likely than not, you are going to pass the tasting exam. It's generally the short written answers is what trips up people. Um, so uh, wines you will taste at level three. There's about 55 wines. So there's uh, at a minimum. There's generally a lot more than that, depending on the provider. Um, so 55 would be the minimum. All right. On to the theory, um, the key factors affecting style and quality, the grape variety. So in our example, we're looking at Chardonnay. So we understand, again, the grape, the characteristics, growing conditions that favors the resulting styles uh, that can come out of that, um, the different growing environments. So at level um, three, it is not just cool, uh, moderate and warm. We have considerations of rainfall. So Mediterranean versus maritime. We have continentality. So there's different elements at factor, uh, rather at work in the growing environment. Uh, vineyard management, there's more considerations here uh, in terms of uh, canopy management, um, about like green harvest, about um, yields, for example, Winemaking, are we making a high volume, inexpensive wine, or are we doing something a little bit higher up the quality chain? So that can impact some choices in the winery as well. Um, maturation, inert, are we going to like use stainless steel and, or concrete? Or are we going to use oak? And we will talk about oak a little bit more uh, as we go along here. Um, and also business factors. So that starts to come in now as well, thinking about things like how much wine can I produce from a given amount of land? Um, what kind of closures, what kind of um, um, packaging am I going to use? Cans, bottles, bags, what have you. Um, labor, do I have hand-picked grapes or machine-harvested grapes? Um, where is my vineyard? Our example is in Sonoma Coast. This is not inexpensive land, so that's going to have an impact, again, on the price uh, of the wines that you'd be selling. So a number of different factors are weighing in on our understanding of the wines. Uh, options for white wine making. So again, as I mentioned, you can look, is it going to be more of a, 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 a higher volume, inexpensive wine or something a little bit higher quality? Um, grape selection and processing, are they just simply harvesting all of the grapes all at one go and throwing them through a crusher and destemmer? Or is there going to be something like a sorting table where we will individually pick healthy grapes um, for our wine? Adjustments we kind of touched on at level two, similar for level three. Um, in terms of fermentation, uh, the vessel, the temperature, the impact that would have on the resulting wine, the time it takes, the size of the vessels and so on. Um, and then the maturation vessel, as I mentioned before, uh, is it inert? Is it like stainless steel, concrete? There are um, clay amphora, um, eggs uh, shaped the, um, uh, um, vessels as well. So in terms of oak, we have a little bit broader discussion here that, that level two. Um, we look at American versus European oak. They have a slight um, flavor variation in what I impart on the wine. Um, how much toasting is done in terms of the, the charring of the barrel. Um, how old are the barrels? Obviously, new barrels impart far more flavor than old barrels, but old barrels still allow oxygen to ingress, which impacts the wine. Um, larger vessels have a less of an impact because of the smaller surface area in contact with the wine versus a small barrel, which has a greater surface area and so on. So that can impact that as well. And also thinking that, well, oak is very, very expensive to buy barrels. So 
if I want to impart oak flavors, but I don't have the budget or I don't want to really spend that much on it, perhaps I can use oak log um, staves, um, sticks of, of oak essentially, or chips that are broken down. All the, all the flavor without the cost essentially. So um, those would be the consideration for oak. So a lot more um, facts, but also some more understanding of how they interact at level three. So this is the SAT for level three. And again, appearance, nose, and palate, um, but there's also, it is broken down. Um, there's more depth, but there's also more range. And I'll explain that as we go through as well. So if I take my same wine again, so I've got my Sonoma Coast Chardonnay 2022, um, I would also want to do a little bit of an expectation setting with the students. The difference between level two, and level three, obviously is the increased knowledge, but also the, the involvement of the students. At level three, there's a far more student involvement. So as the educator, I would just simply say, Sonoma Coast, what does that mean? It's California, so what? Um, oak maturation, how? Why, why is those choices being made? What are the expected characteristics? So there's a lot where the students can put together right from the start without the educators explicitly telling everybody um, what it is. So um, in this case, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that because I'm conscious of time, but suffice to say, there would be some expectations setting at the beginning. Um, the intensity here is still a medium lemon. You'll notice there's a, there's a bigger range of colors available, but this, this wine is a medium lemon. Um, the intensity on the nose, um, now notice that now there's five elements there. In fact, what we say, instead of a three-point scale, which you find at level two, we don't have a five-point scale. We have a three-point scale that subdivides medium into three out three le levels. So I would still think this is, is a medium intensity, but it's on the higher side of medium. So then in this case, I would say the intensity on the nose is medium plus. All right, so this is a medium plus intensity on the nose. The aroma characteristics primary, again, coming from the grape or fermentation, um, as uh, apple and lemon and lime and peach and apricot um, and banana and melon, primary characteristics. Secondary, same as what I mentioned at the level two tasting. I've got some uh, characteristics of a little bit of subtle spiciness like cloves. I've got vanilla. I've got some coconut, again, very subtle, which tells me that perhaps that this is either not new barrels or perhaps they are. there's a smaller percentage of the wine in new barrels. Um, the, the spices may indicate European oak, whereas that vanilla and coconut may indicate American oak. So perhaps there's a blend being done here. Um, so this is, again, theory linkages I can make at level three. There is no tertiary. Um, and so uh, you can see on the, the, the last point there, which says development, this wine has no maturation as of yet. So it is still youthful. It's just full of primary and secondary characteristics. So it is a youthful wine. Now, in terms of the palate, uh, I'm, I've already just tasted it, so I'm not going to do that again. It's still uh, the it's still dry, although note the range of different levels of sweetness you can get in at level three, and you will have wines that will go that will span that. But in this case, it is dry. Um, the acidity is high. Tannin is not relevant again. Uh, the alcohol stays at that three point scale, um, but it is 13.5 percent, um, and it's actually quite well integrated. The alcohol doesn't really stand out, and that's a point I want to bring up later. The body is medium, um, it has not changed, uh, or rather it's not qualified. Um, flavor intensity is pronounced. Uh, flavor characteristics, again, primary and secondary and uh, uh, tertiary, as I mentioned. So primary, apples and uh, lemon, lime, and so on. As I went through secondary, the same kind of characteristics. Now I'm also, again, noticing things like bread dough and bread, but also um, some slight butter. And I can attribute that back very confidently to the malolactic conversion. Um, why was that done? The acidity was very high. It's actually just high now. Um, and so the malolactic conversion would have helped to bring that acidity down and to balance it a little bit and attribute a little bit of buttery characteristics. So that's an, exa an example of linking theory. Tertiary, there's no um, characteristics of tertiary. Uh, and the finish is medium, as I described it uh, in the level two. So there's an interplay of that acidity and those characters, but it does round off at a medium finish. Now for level three, I'm also going to be thinking about the, the quality uh, under the similar rubric. Uh, if you could just advance the slide there, uh, Christine, thank you. Then the quality level here, um, instead of simply just saying this wine is very good because of all of these things, 
I want to involve my students. So it becomes more of a guided discussion where I will say, okay, student A, tell me about the balance of this wine. Okay, we saw the length was medium. Okay, student B, tell me about the intensity and so on. So it's a similar discussion. It's just that instead of me as the educator telling you, it's the students being involved to be able to make some sense of that. And we'll say, okay, yeah, balance was favorable. The intensity was favorable. Complexity, yeah, it's a complex wine. Um, the length falling a little bit short. If the length was a little bit longer, then this wine would be outstanding. Therefore, the wine is very good. Um, so that's how we would do that at level three. Final question is level of readiness for drinking. So I would think about, okay, this wine as it is right now, can I drink it? Well, yes, I can. But does this also have potential for aging? Well, it has quite concentrated flavors and it also has a lot of acidity, which tells me that this wine indeed could uh, potentially age. And as it develops, we may get some characters like some nuts or some honey or some uh, mushrooms as we saw as an example. All right, so that is how we would conduct from level two to level three. And we're going to see that level up even further into diploma. Uh, Christine, over to you. All right, thank you, Jason. So we just saw how we built from level one to level two to level three. As Jason said, level three is an advanced qualification. Level four, or commonly known as the WSET diploma, is our expert level qualification. So. As Jason said, for level three, level having taken level two before joining a level three course is highly, highly recommended, but it is not required. You must have the equivalent knowledge. You don't have to have taken level two. To enroll in diploma, you must have passed level three. So level three is a prerequisite there. Um, and we do that because not having taken level three, taking diploma after that would be just too big of a jump. Um, if you didn't know, um, you know, weren't familiar with WSET and our systematic approach to tasting because taking the diploma is quite the undertaking. Um, and you can see that in some of the, the, the numbers on the screen. So the diploma is six units of study, and I'll go into what those six units are. It is 500 qualification hours. Um, so quite the time commitment as well. Now those 500 hours are broken down into 116 guided learning hours. And whenever we use guided learning hours at WSET, that means time in the classroom with an educator or an online version of a course with an educator. Um, so that is guided learning hours, but there's still, if you can do the math on the fly, um, about 370 hours of personal study and revision um, that you'll be doing as well. So it's, uh, you know, a lot of commitment in terms of time, energy, et cetera. So taking on the diploma is something that uh, you must really think through before you, you know, you go into it in order to be successful. Um, throughout the diploma course, you'll taste 180 or more samples if you take it at a classroom course. Um, so you're taking a huge breadth of wine um, in a diploma class. So if we're going back to level one, you'll be tasting about six wines. Here you're taking tasting. 180. Um, and there'll be quite a few Chardonnays in these 180 wines you'll be tasting. Uh, diploma takes about 18 to 36 months, so about a year and a half to three years. Um, it varies from person to person, um, whether you pass all of your unit exams on the first try or you have to do a reset, but that's typically the amount of time it takes to complete the diploma. Um, and there's quite a large diploma community. There are over 12,000 WSET diploma alumni around the world. So you're also joining um, a really robust community and it's you know, a badge of honor to have passed your diploma, but as we said, quite the undertaking. So let's dive in a little bit to see what's actually covered in diploma and how we've built on the previous levels to get here. Um, and also touching again on the lens of Chardonnay. So in terms of diploma structure, as I mentioned, there are six different units. So first we have what we call the foundation units. So that's diploma unit one, which is wine production. Um, and this unit is very focused on how we're actually making the wine. And this unit is so important because you build on this uh, to, to then go through the, all the other units, um, D2 through six. So this is in, you know, on level two and three, we are calling this kind of the natural and human factors, what's happening in the vineyard, what's happening in the winery, 
to make the styles of wine that we'll then study in the later units. D2 is wine business. So at level three, we started talking about business considerations, as Jason said, um, in terms of the wine industry. This is a much bigger unit um, at Diploma. It's an entire you know, Diploma unit um, and talks about considerations um, you know, from individual wineries, like Jason was talking about, are they going to be, you know, what closures are they using? How long are they aging their wines? Um, you know, are they hand harvesting? Are they, you know, uh, using machinery? All of those different kind of financial considerations to the global wine industry. So, you know, considerations about shipping wine between different countries. Obviously, you know, if you're growing, you're making wine in France and we're drinking it in the United States, how does it get here and what are the considerations um, as we're as we're looking at that? Um, so wine business, that's one of the biggest differentiators. I mean, other than the breadth of the knowledge um, at Diploma that you're really building on um, and, and, and different from the other units. Um, so then we have four product knowledge units. So we have wines of the world. This is D3. Um, this is the largest unit um, and covers basically as it, the title suggests, all the wines of the world. And here we mean all the still wines of the world. Um, we'll also have units covering sparkling wines, fortified wines, and then also an independent research paper. So in terms of exams for level, uh, sorry, diploma units one and two, um, it's going to be a written theory exam with short written answer questions. Um, units, or sorry, diploma units three, four and five are all going to have both a theory section, but also a tasting portion. And then diploma unit six, D6, is going to be, as it says, a research assignment. So that's an essay or research paper that you write in your own time. Now, if we're talking about Chardonnay, it's uh, we're not going to be able to go as in depth as we have at level one, two, and three in terms of how Chardonnay is covered because there are over 250 references to Chardonnay throughout the diploma materials. And I did, well, I didn't count, but I did control F and count to some degree. Um, so at, at level four, Chardonnay is completely interwoven into the text. It's obviously, obviously from level one, we called it a principal grape variety. By level four, you should know so much about Chardonnay that you're not as much talking about, you know, what the typical flavors are or where it grows best you're looking at it um, through a more complex lens. Um, and we'll kind of look at how Chardonnay would be discussed in each of the different units. So in terms of wine production, you know, Chardonnay, we might be looking at, you know, how it, you know, what regions it grows in, you know, how it would be grown differently in a cooler climate like Burgundy versus a warmer climate um, in Australia. Um, you know, what choices would a winemaker need uh, to do in the vineyard to help the grapes ripen appropriately um, based on where it's being grown. Um, you're going to also have to understand, you know, what's happening in the vineyard, or sorry, in the winery. Um, Chardonnay is a grape variety that uh, does really well with a lot of winemaking. So going into a really granular understanding of all the winemaking choices you could use for Chardonnay. In wine business, I mean, Chardonnay, as we said, principal grape variety, it's quite well known around the world. Um, so maybe looking at the markets where it's most popular, um, you know, what market share it makes up um, in terms of the global wine market um, and key considerations perhaps around marketing uh, this grape variety. Chardonnay will be covered many, 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 many times in the D3 unit. Um, as we said, it's grown in many different countries, regions, um, but Chardonnay is a grape variety that tastes very different based on where it's made and how it's made. So you'll be tasting many different Chardonnays and linking that to theory um, throughout the D3 unit of the course to get a really wide range and understanding of how Chardonnay can evolve based on where it's made, how it's made, etc. Now, going back to level one, we learned that Chardonnay was used in Champagne here at level four, we're going to greatly expand on that. Look at all the different sparkling wines in the world where Chardonnay is used um, and you know how it is used differently in different, uh, different regions and styles. And then as we're doing that, also talking about you know, the different environments 
um, options, winemaking options, and also industry associations where sparkling wines are made, both Chardonnay-based sparkling wines and also throughout the sparkling wines course, quite a few other sparkling wines as well. Chardonnay wouldn't be discussed in the fortified wines unit um, because Chardonnay isn't typically a grape used uh, for fortified wines, but you'd be learning about quite a few other uh, fortified styles and tasting those styles throughout the course. And then your research assignment may or may not have uh, Chardonnay included in the discussion. Some past subjects we've used uh, that have been assigned for the research assignment as there is an assigned topic um, twice a year that students may choose to write on are climate change, sustainability, the future of Romanian wine exports, and the emergence of Elgin and the Swartland. So in those discussions, perhaps you'd be talking about Chardonnay, but it would be really be talking uh, dependent upon the, the topic that you are writing about. And then, you know, you'd have discussions throughout class where you'd be taking all these different pieces of knowledge that you learned throughout the units and relating it to Chardonnay. So a discussion you might have um, in class with your educator because diploma is quite discussion-based um, rather than the educator talking at you. It's a lot of discussion together. You might look at, you know, with reference to at least three AVAs, explain how the USA can produce wines of different styles, quality levels, and price points from Chardonnay. So quite a uh, complex question with lots of things to touch on there. Um, and this is the type of question that you might be expected to synthesize as you've reached the diploma level. Now, diploma tasting, I'm not going to go into the granular tasting as Jason has done for level two and three, because at diploma, the tasting itself is going to look very, very similar to uh, the level three tasting. So I'm actually going to have pretty much the same tasting note that Jason just developed for us at level three. So the appearance and the nose are going to look pretty much the same, um, as is the palate. Now, the main difference at diploma is as we go, after we've gone through the tasting, you're making a quality assessment just as you have at level three. But as Jason discussed at level three, you know, during the classroom portion, as you're tasting all together, there'll be a discussion between the educator and the students on how we get to a certain quality assessment. Now, at level four in diploma, in the exam conditions, you will be expected to write an explanation of why you get, came to the quality assessment you did. So at level three, you're just choosing one of these options. At level four, you're going to have to write a paragraph explaining why a wine is acceptable, good, very good, or outstanding. So with our Sonoma Coast Chardonnay, you'll remember Jason went through a discussion of why we came to very good in diploma, you as the, the candidate will be expected to write that, dis that discussion, that argument on your exam. Similarly to bottle aging, we touched on this in level three. We decided if the wine was suitable for bottle aging or not suitable for bottle aging, but in an exam at diploma, you will also be expected to write an explanation of why this wine is suitable or not suitable for bottle aging. Now, the other thing you might be expected to do on a diploma exam is to put the wine in context. So you may be asked uh, additional questions about, you know, what grape variety do you think this wine is or and why, what's the style or the country of origin. So again, you're tasting wines blind on your exam. You'll be expected to come up with a bit more context for what the wine is once you'd reach the diploma level. So using the systematic approach to tasting and the tasting note you've just written, would you be able to decide that this was a Chardonnay coming from uh, California? I guess you'll have to take the diploma course to decide if you'll, you can build that skill. Uh, but I can say confidently most um, diploma students are able to make those types of judgments after they've gone through the course. So with that quick run through all four wine qualifications, we have a few minutes for questions and I will hand it over to Jason uh, to take as many as we're able to in the time we have remaining. Great, thanks, Christine. Yes, that was quite, quite the journey from one level one to level four. I think it's the fastest anyone's ever done it. So congratulations to us uh, and all the students uh, and everyone listening in. Um, right, so some questions. I'm just going to start from the earliest one I see. What is uh, the question? Is what are the differences between oaked and unoaked Chardonnay? That's a really good question with 
can be a quite a long and convoluted answer, but the simple answer to that is, has it spent time in contact with anything oak or oak related? Am I expecting any flavors um, that would be derived from oak, like vanilla, coconut, spices, and so on? If it says unoaked, I would not expect that. If it says oaked, then I would expect that. Um, yes, I think if I go on longer than that, it will take too long. But there's a reason why we generally just see that with Chardonnay and not with other uh, grapes. Um, but yes, that's the short answer to that. Um, Christine, if you want to, if you, I'm happy to alternate with you. Um, yeah, I'll take the next one. So the next sure. question we see is um, where or how would you say the WSCT qualifications helped the most in your career so far? Um, so I think we're, you know, a little biased because we work at WSCT, but um, I worked um, in the industry for about five years before I joined, you know, seven years before I joined WSCT. Um, and I really found, you know, as a young person in the wine industry, when I was just starting my career, um, I felt like I wasn't always taken seriously. Um, you know, I didn't have as much experience as other people in the industry. Um, and I, you know, I hadn't worked in, in a lot of different facets of the industry uh, yet. So I decided to take my WSET qualifications. I started with level two before moving on to level three and diploma. And I feel like having my qualifications made people start looking at me differently and taking me more seriously um, in the industry. And it also helped build my own confidence. Um, so, you know, that was, I took my qualifications quite early on in my wine career. Um, but I helped, I think it helped me get in the foot in my foot in the door at some, you know, new roles within the companies I was working at. Um, and just had the, you know, made the people I was working with look at me like, oh, okay, if she has her level three, she must really know what she's talking about. Um, so I think, you know, personal confidence, but also respect and understanding within the industry. That's really well said, Christine. I, I, if anything, I'd like summarize it myself, just saying credibility. Uh, and that's what it is you get from level three. Once you have the diploma, it's uh, it, it's it, it makes a big difference. Certainly when, when you feel working with people in the industry, because the qualifications are known around the world um, that, that you generally people will know what that is and can respect that. All right. The next question up here is what are main difference between the course, these courses and the ones offered by the court of sommeliers? I, I assume that's the court of master sommeliers. Um, it's simple. Simply the court has more. Uh, service uh, elements to it. Uh, certainly, at a, I, I am a certified sommelier as well. I did it over a decade ago, um, but there's a, a lot of factual information, um, less of the kind of the, the the linkages where we talk about the hows and the whys and the analysis. Um, certainly, at uh, the lower levels, it's facts based and also service based. Um, WCT does not have service based, and also we don't focus as much on producers. Whereas a sommelier, you would certainly want to have that pro producer knowledge if you're working on the floor. Um, so if you think of WCT as foundational, I mean, it's certainly understanding the realm of wine court is more on the service side. Um, they do work hand in hand, though. I would say it's not either or. I mean, if you could do both, that's great because they do complement each other. So the next um, question yeah, I see ahead. is, can I purchase the book used in level two uh, before beginning our course so I can spend time getting ahead? So our level two textbooks are available for purchase on our website, wsctglobal.com. But that said, if you sign up in advance for your level two course, your approved program provider should be providing those materials um, in advance so you can study beforehand. And you'd be expected to, to begin your reading uh, beforehand and, and start some of that self-study uh, before you begin the course. But if you really wanted to get a jump on things, yes, the level two textbook is available for purchase. Great. Um, you'll notice that a feedback a poll just popped up on your screen. So please do take a moment to answer that. Uh, it's just as simply, how would you rate this webinar? Um, because the time, I know time is running, running out. Um, I will quickly go on to the next question. You mentioned the diploma typically takes one and a half to three years. Is that full-time or part-time? Well, actually, it's always going to be part-time because you don't, you, it's not a, WCT or even the WCT School London doesn't have full-time programs. They're basically on a weekly basis. Um, if you take um, more of the units, kind of more condensed, then you can finish it faster. Um, but then you would have to devote a lot more time akin to perhaps a full-time course. Um, but if, if you take it spaced out, where you just do one unit at a time, 
it will take up to three years, if, if that helps. Um, but it really does depend on how much time you have yourself. I took, I think, myself about two years to do it, and it was also st still felt pretty intense. Um, so it's just really how much time you have to devote to that. All right, so unfortunately, I think we're running short on time. We apologize we weren't able to get to every question, but please feel free to write into our website. There's a Contact Us page. We'll be happy to answer those questions. Jason, I think you have a little housekeeping to send us out. Yes, I do. Thank, thank you, Christine. Uh, um, right. So first of all, thank you again to everybody for, for joining us, uh, for asking your questions and for, for listening. I really do appreciate your interest in the qualifications. Um, the recording of this session, if you have taken part, you will it will be emailed to everybody. Um, it will also be available to watch on the WCT Events Hub on YouTube, where you can catch all the previous events. Um, there is an upcoming webinar on the 6th of February at 4 p.m. GMT, uh, and that's one of our WCT Bite Size uh, webinars. And that one is What is Sauvignon Blanc with Shane Jones, also a diploma a graduate. Shane is a fantastic educator. I know him personally. Um, and so I think it'd be great to, to listen to that about the, the Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and if you'd like to find out more or to sign up for any of our qualifications, um, you can go to our website, wctglobal.com. Um, if you want to find a provider, go to the Where to Study tab, and then you can find any of our 800 plus providers around the world uh, from there. All right. Well, thank you again. And uh, I think this is where we're going to end the presentation. Thank you, everyone.